Welcome back to Sunless Skies. In the last episode, we discovered the Royal Society and discovered the incredible array of amazing inventions that we can get at the Portsmouth Arsenal. Two of which I got. Got the Montresor Chamber, taking up the, the bridge slot, giving me four hold and four quarters. And the shield slot thing, the the amniotic crew containment slash anti-breach system, which gives me quarters and armor. Man, I'm sure my crew is just a huge fan of this. So yay, get to go to sleep in a sack of fluid, yay. So nice. Anyway, that was just the Portsmouth Arsenal, as I discovered at the very end of the last episode. There's also the workshops, which I think have weapons and other things like that, because the arsenal didn't have any weapons. It was just armor and, you know, basically every slot but weapons. So let's check out the workshops. Here the Society constructs specialist equipment to further the Society's explorations, London's armaments, and the occasional Sky Captain's adventure. Ah, oh, we can repair our hull. Spend an experimental modification to repair 25 hull. Hmm. I don't know if that's worth it. I mean, I'm going to go back to Albion. <laughs> Help. What? I'm in Albion. I'm going to go back to London. Probably right after this. Actually, am I? Maybe not. Maybe I should do that. Let's save that for after I see if there's any other things I want to get, because other things might increase my health even further. Hmm. I can drop off the eccentric. Right. She's being polite about it, but she's been whistling and tapping her feet a lot. She's eager for some shore leave. Sure, we still have a quest to do for them, but I don't think that's going to get done anytime super soon. I don't want to drop too many people off and just forget where they all are. <laughs> and I especially don't want to do it across multiple regions. But, uh, yeah, I'll drop them off. She gives you a wink as she enters the glass doors of Portsmouth House before advancing on a coterie of junior engineers armed with a wrench and a double-sided list of precise questions. You think that you'll fit right in. Oh yeah, I forgot that there... an engineer? Was that the class? The, the slot they took? I think they were chief engineer, yeah. So yeah, this really is perfect for them. They must love it here. Event inventions and tools abound. The eccentric has set up her own workspace amidst the inventive chaos of Portsmouth House. Her workshop is an oasis of calm where everyone and everything has its place. A queue of junior engineers seek apprenticeship with her. Nice. So what do I want them to do? Oh, I can ask them to fully repair my engine just for sovereigns. That would be nice. Is that going to take time? Because with the signaler, you know, I set them off to do something and it was going to take time for them to complete that. Um, can you fully repair my engine? The eccentric takes one look at your engine and sighs. I'm wondering if you need me back aboard, comrade. Done. For 56 sovereigns. A job worth doing and well done. She hefts her tools box. Go and have a bit of lunch. I'll get to work. When you return, your engine is good as new. The eccentric grins. Took the opportunity to clean her, too. I don't bring her back in that state again. Okay, Mom. Yeah, I guess that's all they do. Is just set up a workbench place and help you repair your engine if you want. So I guess there's no reason to leave them, really. You might as well take them back before you leave. Yeah, let's do that. The mellifluous president has been saying alarming things about tenure. Probably best to have her back aboard. <laughs> before <laughs> before they keep her. The eccentric nods. She asks you to give her a few minutes while she hands out detailed instructions and handover notes to her colleagues and apprentices. Several hours and several rounds of farewell drinks later, you and the eccentric are both back aboard your engine. Not too much worse for wear. Let's talk to the engineers. Perhaps they'll be willing to furnish your locomotive with advanced equipment. 
distractions. The senior engineer marches across the smoggy workshop floor to meet you. Well, she barks. Sorry, I mean, hello. We're frightfully busy. We've examining... We... We've? We have examining the effects of vitrification on Murgatroyd's tea. We've just had a breakthrough. There's a gentle explosion behind her, followed by the tinkle of shattering glass. A sorry, mustache. Do visit the arsenal if you're looking for something special. At the Portsmouth Arsenal, you can trade in cargo items for unique equipment for your locomotive. So that definitely sounds like weapons. Where is the arsenal? Oh, wait. That's where I just was. Hmm. Visit the inscribed tinkerer. The most famous or notorious engineer associated with the Royal Society. The inscribed tinker likes her workbench tidy and her tea as strong as the devil's opinions. She believes in iteration of technology, of society, of people, and her inventions are intended to mitigate specific dangers and obstacles of the high wilderness. Her tea-stained notebook bulges with blueprints, and her skin is covered in inky treatments of the correspondence. She raises an eyebrow as you enter her office. Thank God, I was in need of a break. The inscribed tinker can provide truly exceptional equipment from her shop if she likes you. Ooh. Well, let's get on their good side. The tinker's request. If it's work you're after, Captain, I can be of assistance in that department. A commission. The inscribed tinker produces a slim notebook. The correspondence, Captain. The incandescent language. The Pentecostal tongues of the stars. She invites you to examine the broken sigils that score her skin, mirrored in her notebook. I've heard of a unique sigil I've not come across before. It's been cited by students in Trader's Wood, by an old friend in the mausoleum, and by my least favorite person in Pan. As a captain, you could get to those places and confirm the sighting. I'd give you access to a few of my unique designs, should you wish to help. Hell yes, I do! Most Serene Mausoleum, that's literally where I want to go right after this because of the frickins of red honey I want to deliver, so let's do that one. Oh wait, oh this is going to be one of those things where you have to search for it um, and there's a certain percent chance that you'll succeed and if you don't you have to look for it somewhere else, I think. So I don't think I'm guaranteed to find it at the mausoleum. So nothing more to do there. Yeah, were there any weapons here at the arsenal? It's called the arsenal, which makes it sound like it would have weapons, but I looked at every single design. Containment, like a defensive library system increases your army. Mechanical Turk. Mining and smelting. Forward mounting cannery. No, none of these are weapons. I think that might be it for the Royal Society. We spent, what, like two full episodes here? This place is awesome. Or one and a half episodes? A long time. How did I get this? Academia 2 gave me the caddies of dried tea as a bargain. Oh, wait a second. I can use these right now, right here. Let me buy them all. And I believe we could have tea with... What were you? What was your name? You're the energetic mechanic. Yeah, we could have tea with them, right? Yes. A good cup of tea should convince them to step away from their work for a few minutes. The energetic mechanic eyes the proffered tea eagerly. Well, alright. I can make up the time later. The two of you sit beside a great glass window that overlooks the worrying chaos of the Royal Society's lower workshops. Manufactured sunlight seeps over the metal and glass, burnishing the airy. I have just one goal, Captain. Everything that enters my doors should leave improved. The mechanic grins. There's so much to do in so little time, but if I achieve only that, it'll do. Gained two experimental modifications. 
All right, let's use up the rest of them. Is it a different description? Nope, that's the same. Gain two again. Is it always two that I gain? Because it doesn't say I gain two here in this little blurb, so I thought it might be random. It seems like it's always two, or I'm just keep rolling the same number. Yeah, it's always two. That's a very convenient source of experimental modifications. Don't have anything I want to spend them on right now, but I'm sure I will in the future. Oh, and I was wondering if they sell fuel and supplies. They do. Oh, hey, they sell munitions. That's actually one of the other things that you can give them for, um, for experimental modifications. I think you only get one per each of these, though, so it's a lot less efficient than the bargain that I just did, getting two for each tea that cost me 70 each, I think. Right. I want to find the most serene mausoleum. I don't know where it is in this reconfigured Albion, so... I guess I'll just fill up with fuel and supplies and let's go exploring. Do I have anything taking up a crap ton of space? Not really, just these two things. So there's no nothing to really dump off at London, other than those two things, which isn't all that much. And I have so much old space now. Beautiful. Let's go. Where should I explore? Well, I want to explore just around this Royal Society area to see what they've done to the place. I, I want to see the edges where it turns from green to crag and oh, there's the telescope. Nell's Tower. edge of the world. <laughs> sure, let's go. Oh, I don't know if I can get there actually. Uh, that might lead down. Let's follow this up though. get around back. I have so much room for hold space and people. 19. The yawning tear in the hole. 100% chance of success. We have two hold space, so what do we possibly want? This is sovereigns, this is fuel, this is who knows what, munitions, supplies. Let's go to the captain's quarters and something special. Otherworldly artifact. Nice. Nothing. I'm gonna go up. Yeah. 
gonna go like clockwise around this place, I guess. I don't know how the map might be arranged, especially since they've redesigned Albion. I have a hunch that... Uh, remember how the mausoleum was so close to London before? I've heard something vaguely about the organization of places in this game being somewhat randomized, but like assigned to different rings, some sort of a like ring system. And that makes me wonder if certain things like the easier to get ports are assigned to be like, you know, a certain radius around London, like the mausoleum is going to be somewhere on this like ring around London, but I don't know. Just based on little things that I've heard, that's kind of my hunch, which means that I probably shouldn't be exploring the outside ring, if that's the case, but who knows, everything's been redesigned. Drill? What do I have on? Yeah, the drill and hidden compartments thing. Tackity? Hey, how's it going, buddy? What's your name? UCE Zesty. <laughs> nice. of old ships, derelict machinery, and abandoned buildings speckle the sky, the machinery of London fallen silent. Almost hit that. Yeah, this is a big change in mood here. Stuff looks icy and frozen, and now everything's all green and white, whereas before it was purple. Ooh, what's that noise? I hear rockets. Grave robber. A resurrectionist deceased. Ah, uh, yeah, they're the ones that plunder graves for corpse goods and the bodies themselves. Search for valuables. Failure? That was a 93% chance. Man. Hmm. Yeah, I think we've seen this. I think we failed this before. Find a bunch of things that gives us the sovereigns, but also find a cupboard full of skulls. And five tear. Ooh, it's a horror over there. In this abandoned nook of the heavens, the resurrection men gather to trade their grave gold and their stolen cadavers. Can't to say that. Let's go to the horror. I've got the terror to deal with it. I'm a little bit high on terror, but eh, not super high. Plus, I'm just freaking curious. The resurrection men haunt this place. They do not abide witnesses. 
Oh. This, uh, that could be the mausoleum, because the mausoleum had the dead son outside. That kind of, it's kind of like a package deal, I think. The mausoleum and the dead son. Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that's it. Well, that looks different. You fly over a dead sun. Its blackened remnants immortalize her enduring majesty's conquest of this quarter of heaven. I don't think it was anywhere near this vivid before. Holy shit. Basket, one supplies. It's Murgatroyd's fungal crackers, yay! Please don't give me a brain fungus. Ooh, hello! Come on, let's get them together. Oop, went the wrong way. Alright, thanks for the teamwork. I don't think you're attacking me though, so I'm probably gonna have to kill you too. Let's rummage in the... Um, no, let's try to gain unusual cargo. I can always buy supplies somewhere. This stuff can be a little bit harder to get. Yeah, a moment of inspiration? I really need that. A picture of two lovers holding hands sits in a brass frame. Something old and horned stands behind them, seemingly rubbing its hands in glee. I wouldn't call that inspiring. That would fill me with dread. Yeah, this is the mausoleum. Hmm. The incognito princess is fascinated by the mausoleum until she sees you noticing. That's not what I said mmm to, though. This place looks quite a bit different. The shape is the same, I think, but... But everything looks so much more dour. I think it was quite a bit more colorful and pleasant looking before. Now it feels... harsher. Or darker? More grave-like? I don't know. Something not as pleasant about it. Okay, so we've been here before. The Firkins of Red Honey. 1,000 just for them directly, plus a bonus of 1,000. And another reputation with the smugglers. I now have reputation for a scorner of lamps. The ethereal apiaris teases a thorn from her hand. Blood beads on her palm. I received a letter from a dead man today. Well, officially dead. Ceremonially dead. One of the deathless aristocrats of the most serene mausoleum. They're planning a revel. What else will you do with eternity, I suppose? They want five firkins of red honey. Little attempt is made to hide your transaction, for the deathless do as they please. After all, if you're exempt from the laws of time, why should you be subject to those of customs and excise? A haunted footman hands over your payment, along with the macabre counselor's thanks for a job well done and an invitation to Paterns as Half-Light Mask. Bargain for some ministry-approved literature. That's always a good thing. Always need that stuff. Let's see what there is to do here. Attending a funeral. 
Attend a Skyfarer's funeral? I'm sure we've done a lot of these things. Terra has fallen? Nice. Actually, fell by quite a bit. I don't actually remember doing this, though. Let's read it. The funeral is a mix of gentle sobbing and clutching handkerchiefs in excitement at stories from the depths of the high wilderness. You play your part, ensuring that a fellow traveler's life is remembered instead of being lost to the winds far from home. I can endure my aunt? They want to join the Deathless? And that's just shore leave. They could just do that for a day? Is that the only... Okay, yeah. Attend a funeral. I can only do one of those at a time. And then have to wait a while till I can do them again. Let's look for the inscribed Tinkerer's Sigil. The walls are adorned with all manner of ornamentation. Sifting through sigils. You follow the Tinker's instructions. A quiet window off a landing below the upper vault. Far below, mourners and courtiers, all in black silk, wander the nave like a host of spiders. You take out a magnifying glass, provided, and turn your attention to the walls. Some quick thinking on your engineer's part doused the worst of the flames. Correspondence often has spectacular side effects. Your notebook has survived with your drawings of the many, many identical broken sigils that adorn the gallery that looks out over the dead star below. So I found the sigil. Um, return to her at the Royal Society. Okay, good. Don't have to go look at the other places. Let's get a port report. Done that before, obviously. Inter a member of your crew. Uh, is that new? The mausoleum accepts remains or mementos of the dead in its vaults. For those who can afford it, of course. For everyone else, there's always the sky. Um, wait. That sounds like I'm going to kill them, or... Huh? I'm not doing that. <laughs> Hell no. Ah, right, the Chamberlain's disappearance. Speak to the Deathless in the mausoleum to earn a favor, so I need some of the favor to do anything with those two bottom ones. Memorial to the Prince Consort. What did that do again? Mm, oh, right, I can reduce terror. Depending on what I give. Well, I don't have that, so... Three uncanny specimens? Sure. Oh, that did a lot. That did like 20%. The cherry registrar gives you a vibrant smile. Your specimens are placed in a safe under the registrar's desk, which is swiftly locked. The smile never falters. You're led to the chapel where the prince consort is housed. Crowds throng around the tomb, leaning over the sturdy iron railings for a better look. You're directed to a balcony up a small spiral stair. From your elevated position above the crowd, you can make out the serene features of the prince's effigy, gazing up from his tomb as though at the stars. You can also make out a little door just behind the tomb, locked and barred. So I could actually do that again if I want. Ooh. I could also pay three sovereigns to, I think, reduce my terror by 1%? Yes. <laughs> And I could just keep doing that? Oh, that would take a while. I mean, I'm going to go back to London after this, and that should reduce my tear significantly. I'm still going to do this, though. Let's do it again. Down to 4%. And I've only got 9 uncanny specimens left. Let's contemplate the dead sun. I know that gives me terror. But also a vision of the heavens. Yeah, we've seen that before. Let's approach the deathless. Ah, the macabre counselor wants us to find their daughter. I remember that. I need to gain their favor, though. I'm sure if I found their daughter, that would gain their favor. But I don't have their daughter right now, so... What if I do this? 49%. Sure. 
Sure. Success. I don't know what I really did. I could have spoken with them before. Oh, I've gained favor. Good. The counselor advances through the nave like an old spider trespassing on a rival's web. Um, we've seen that before. I believe. Can't do any of these things, though. Need a mystery approved literature. What about... What about these things? Yes, now I can find the Privy Counselor's tomb. Or investigate the Chamberlain's disappearance, which has a 40% chance of success. But this is obviously more important. This is our big quest with the inconvenient aunt. Find the Privy Counselor's tomb. Your aunt wants to find the final design for the unclear bomb. It'll prove collusion. Or, she adds hopefully, provide exoneration. Someone in the mausoleum might be able to help. A candlelit confession. The luminous cardinal tracks you down as you make inquiries of the footman. His vestments are as pale as a winter dawn. This way, he whispers. He leads you deep into the chambers of the mausoleum's heart. The hallways here are lit only by candlelight. At last, you arrive at a narrow archway that looks down on a long spiral stair. The privy counselor is buried below. His funeral was ostentatious. He was accorded the second largest tomb. I began wondering. It is blasphemy. May God have mercy on all our souls. The cardinal strides away into the gloom. Search the Privy Counselor's tomb to find the designs for the unclear bomb. And I just lost the favor that I gained. There's one tomb at the foot of the stairs is as vast as a gothic cathedral and must occupy an entire wing of the mausoleum. It's almost entirely shrouded in darkness. The light from your lamps struggles against the tides of gloom. Search for the design of the unclear bomb. Her Majesty's Privy Counselor must have taken it to the grave. Knight's Black Agents. You walk forward into the darkness, reaching out for obstacles. Your hands disappear before you, as though swallowed by night. Your aunt vanishes as though she never was. You brush against stone as cold as death's lips, feel cobwebs upon your face, but can see nothing. Inch by inch you press on. A suddenly familiar voice splits the darkness. Are you there? I found it. Your aunt's voice is quiet. She sounds scared. Look for your aunt. She's found something. The Death of Light. You find her by feeling your way around the curvature of the wall, back towards the center of the crypt. Your aunt is just ahead of you. Don't make any sudden movements. I found it. The designs? The unclear bomb. Your hands are on it. You remove your hand from the wall immediately. The Privy Counselor's tomb has been taken up with a dormant, unclear bomb. The weapon devised by London to kill a son. The device to quench stars, drowning them in sorrow. Why is it still here? Why hasn't it been used? Your aunt tugs your sleeve. Let's get out of here. Slowly. I can see why they were given such a large tomb. It has a huge ass star murdering bomb in it. <laughs> I note that they didn't destroy it, they just stored it, thinking that they might need it in the future, but yeah, they didn't use it, so then how did they kill Albion's son? Leave the tomb. It does not seem wise to linger here. You help your aunt find her way through the darkness, back to the spiral stairs that leads you into the more welcoming chambers of the mausoleum. You stub your toe and your aunt trips several times, but together you manage. We'll talk back on board, your aunt says when you reach the top of the stairs. Her skin is ashen, but her expression is stern. You have the location of Albion's sun-vanquishing weapon. 2,000 experience. Nice. Let's go speak with him. 
talk to your aunt about the unclear bomb. Your aunt looks up an ancient battered etiquette book. This is from my school days, she says with a wistful smile. Her focus sharpens. We need to know why London colluded with revolutionaries to build this dreadful weapon and then didn't use it. There were four people at the rendezvous. Two, three now, are dead. There's only one person who can give us the answers we need. Her renewed majesty. Your aunt barrels on. There's an old protocol we could take advantage of. If we had a royal dispensation, we could use the privilege of an answer to get an audience. The sovereign is be behoven, behoven, behoven to answer one question truthfully. Huh. How do we get a royal dispensation? Oh, what is this? A second mint. Second mint is a weird term that they use to describe giving them shore leave. Listen to Auntie's suggestion. She's been baking up a storm. This usually means she wants something. <laughs> Possible employment for an aunt. Just an idle thought, she says, presenting you with a new batch of sourdough loaves. Mm. She frowns at the consistency of the bread, as though she expects it to get its act together sharpish. But if you wish to make use of my full arsenal of talents, you might want to grant me shore leave at the most serene mausoleum. Her eyes gleam behind her horn-rimmed spectacles. I have ideas. But if you think I'm more valuable aboard your engine, that's up to you. Your aunt will be able to generate barrels of unseasoned hours for you while seconded at the most serene mausoleum. I don't want to get rid of them because they're my only quartermaster. So, yeah, how do we get a royal dispensation? Um... Yeah, we've already seen that before. It's not anything special or related to the quest. I guess we just need to wait until we have it, or maybe we'll just pop up and say something at some point. Hmm. Yeah, can't do anything with the Deathless now. Let's buy all the literature. Actually, was that one of the things that I could do to gain favor? I thought literature was used for something. Make a donation to the upkeep of the mausoleum. Yeah. The Deathless do not lack for time. They do, however, lack for diversion. Fresh reading material is valued high here. A glimpse of a world left far behind. I think we've seen this before. Yeah, I think we've done this before. Hmm. So that gives me an opportunity to possibly gain favor if I roll well on this, which I did. Okay, then... Um... Can I explore the Cardinal's disappearance? Or Chamberlain's disappearance, rather. 40%. Damn, success. I'm getting lucky with the rolls. The Deathless frown on any discussion of the matter among their servants, but you manage to befriend a group of footmen over a game of cards. It's an issue that's been gnawing at them. With the Chamberlain gone, no one has seniority of the sepulcher, and no one has permission to correct the clocks that go wrong. When I last saw him, he was descending into the deepest vault, says one of the footmen, laying down a king and queen of hearts. We're not meant to go down there, so I thought it was odd, but I'm hardly going to stop him, am I? You can follow the Chamberlain's trail from here in the nave. Okay, well, let's save that for the next episode. So I hope you've enjoyed so far, and when we return, we're going to descend into the vaults to search for the dismal chamberlain.